Hey guys, it's Daniel. The following is a clip from my interview with Soundgarden producer Michael Beinhorn. If you want to see the full interview, it's linked below. You know, in addition to your producing, which was very different from what they did before, the songs themselves that Soundgarden recorded for that record were in some ways a departure from their previous sound. Did they ever discuss with you why they went in a more melodic direction, so to speak? Um, well, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm going to take as much credit for that as I think they should, okay. <laughs> you know, especially when it came to Chris. I mean, from the outset of the recording, I felt it was very important that not only was the music that they co composed for this record the very best that they could come up with. I really encouraged the rest of the guys in the band to come with their as many of their own compositions as possible. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that there was like a, a very broad contribution from the band to this record, which, you know, I, I think to, to a great extent there was. But with Chris, since he was the primary songwriter, I really felt that it was essential that his songs were, were the absolute cream of the crop for him. And I noticed that he was starting to kind of fall into this um, headspace where a lot of the music that he was, that he was coming up with, the songs he was coming up with were kind of, it was sort of so-so, like they weren't that exciting. And I, I started to get really worried about that, you know, so I had a conversation with him about it and, you know, I, I really tried to reorient his thinking in terms of what kinds of songs that he wrote, not specifically melodic, but I just asked him, what do you like? Because from his perspective, I think he felt that he had to write songs that were going to please his audience. But my attitude was, you, you can't possibly know who these people are, what they really want. You know, all you can do is approach them from the perspective of being a performer who they love which means that they're going to like what you do if you've put your heart and your soul into it. So let's proceed from that perspective instead of trying to please them. You know, mm -hmm. and when it came back to it, what he really liked was melodic songs, you know, and from that conversation actually came a couple of songs that went up on the record, Fell on Black Days and of course, Black Hole Sun. That is really interesting. We did everything in a pretty rote fashion, mm -hmm. you know, in, in terms of the hierarchy of what instrument went first and what instrument went next and, you know, what, what we what we ended with, you know, on all the songs, it was pretty much the same thing. We started with drums. We added, we did, went to bass, added guitars, went to vocals. On some of the songs, we might add some percussion here and there, maybe a couple of other instruments, but it was pretty much all done the same way. The same with Fell on Black Days. It wasn't really... There wasn't anything about it that was out of character from the way we were recording anything else. But that was another one where, where uh, Chris played for them guitar, too. So, you know, I read an interesting quote from Chris where he said one of the, not conflicts, but one of the things that the band had to overcome with this record in particular is that all four people in the band had their own sense of rhythm, had their own sense of feel. And so there was kind of a clashing of ideas, so to speak. Was it difficult in any way to get all the guys on the same page or were they able to more or less mesh easily? In what sense? Well, he was saying, for example, if Kim wrote a song, his sense of timing, like Chris's sense of timing and his feel is different than Kim. So he'd have a hard time sometimes adapting to what Kim wrote and vice versa. Or if Ben wrote something, then the guys would kind of have to adapt to Ben's style. I didn't really see anything like that when we, when we made the record. I didn't see any kind of, you know, moving in and out of like a certain person's style, you know, I mean, Kim tried to play the beginning. Chris actually wanted Kim to play the guitars on Black Hole Sun mm -hmm. because I think Chris was very concerned about, I guess, usurping Kim's role and being seen as someone who had mm -hmm. taken over on the project and just sort of did all the, you know, rhythm guitar work. And, Kim came in and, you know, he tried to play the part, but he didn't have the same feel as Chris. In the end, Chris, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd hoped that Chris was going to do it sooner, but Chris was right to let Kim go through the whole process of at least trying it. 
Um, in the end, Chris went on, you know, went on to play the the, the parts on that rec- on that song. But by and large, you know, everyone had been they'd been rehearsing most of this stuff prior to doing the record, so it wasn't as if it took a little while for them to to you know ease into each other's ideas and things like that. I mean, on the record, they all sound like they fit together mm-hmm. intentionally very well. You know, on songs like Half, it's not as if there's like a full band playing there either. Mm-hmm. You know, the instrumentation is much different. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a song that I pushed for very hard uh, as well, because I felt that uh, Ben's contribution to the record was absolutely essential. Like it just, his work really adds something very unique to the whole thing and just augments it in this beautiful, beautiful way. Uh, and I, 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 I'm so happy that he was on that record and in that band, you know, and the same thing with, um, with head down, mm-hmm. Yeah. but you know, with those two head down was more of a band song, but I think everyone also liked head down so much that no one had any problems adapting to it at all, you know, uh, and the same with Matt songs. I mean, everyone just came in and played them and they, they got into the groove. I mean, you can feel that there's a different sensibility in each of those songs, but by and large, it all sounded, you know, it all sounds fluid. It all sounds like it fits together. Yeah, for sure. And I actually wanted to ask you about that. One of the things about Soundgarden that I'm impressed by is the fact that Ben, Matt, Kim, and Chris, they all play guitar. They can all write music. Not every band has that versatility. Were you aware that they had that versatility or was that like a pleasant surprise when you started working with them? Um, I found it out pretty quickly after I started working with them. I didn't know beforehand, but obviously when I knew that, I was I, I just thought, wow, this is great. And that on that basis, that's why I I I, I told the guys that I, I I really encouraged them to contribute as much as they possibly could material wise. Mm-hmm, for sure. I felt that the rhythm section aspect of this record had to be very, very had to stand away from the pack. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean a lot of that was because I, I felt that rock records had kind of deviated towards this um, this really kind of thin sound where you got some attack out of the drums, but you didn't get a whole bunch of low end and depth in the same. And the bass was kind of thought of as a kind of like an it was like an afterthought, which, yeah. you know, if you listen to records from like the 60s and 70s, bass is out front because, you know, we're only a couple of years away from R&B records, mm-hmm. you know, which is where rock comes from. And blues and things like that and bass is obviously a big deal you know you're driving the you're driving the rhythm section with the bass and the drums mm-hmm. and especially like with bands like metallica with their records i mean they just tried to bury bass guitar as much as possible and i was like what? why would you do that mm-hmm. you know so my feel is like I, I i have to go the opposite direction i i, I came from more of an r b background um, and I, I love dub music very much and things like mm-hmm. that where, where bass is very prevalent. So when you look li- and when you listen to Led Zeppelin records, for example, yeah, you yeah. can hear every note the bass is playing and that's, re- it's really important because there's a lot of counterpoint in bass, you know, so to kind of eliminate it or to kind of stick it way in the background is to me, it's kind of silly. I mean, you're missing all this beautiful like movement and. You know, and again, like counterpoint against vocal melody, because if you're in a rock band, you can't really, you, you don't have a lot of, exp- there aren't a lot of opportunities to experiment with counterpoint without interfering with the guitar, with interfering with the vocal, because the only instrument you have apart from bass to do counterpoint would be a guitar, mm-hmm. you know, and you could be playing in the vocalist range. So to me, the rhythm section sound was going to be important on this record. Um, I found a, rack of old Neve modules that no one had ever heard of before these 1057s which were germanium had germanium transistors in them Hmm. as opposed to 1073s which had silicon transistors and they featured heavily in the drum sound on this record um they just added this punch and this presence that i've never really heard before basically I did, we did a lot of stuff like that, you know, with the guitars, it was the same thing, like trying to find the right coloration to sit with the bass 
So I didn't want to have a guitar sound that everyone else had. I wanted to get something else, something that was unique. Unfortunately, Chris is using very different guitars for rhythm. Mm -hmm. So that helped. And we had a we had a great rig and we wound up getting some really great guitar sounds. Did you do a lot you know, of layering so afterwards? A, uh a lot of layering on that one? On like on guitars and vocals. Like was there a lot of layering for that record or how did you approach that part of it? Not much. I mean for the guitars for the for the for the main rhythm stuff, it was usually just a pair. Mm -hmm. One pair, that was it. 